Hello students, I hope you are doing great and uh, apologies first of all for being uh, kind of irregular in the video uploads. I am trying my best to upload and become more regular in future. I will be bringing up more content for you guys. And uh, today's video is uh, all about a genome uh, editing strategy called as CRISPR-Cas9. How this platform was discovered in bacteria as a defense mechanism and how humans adapted to this knowledge uh, to understand uh, and apply this knowledge as a biotechnological aspect. I hope that you like this video and do subscribe to my channel. Uh, the, it took me a lot of hours to assemble all the images uh, and edit them in a particular fashion for you to understand. So I hope you do like this video and please uh, download uh, the lecture notes uh, from the Telegram channel once you have fully viewed this video thanks a lot and keep watching and apologies for the delay and irregularities from my end i will be bringing more content more regularly soon thank you have a good day hello students i hope all of you are doing fine in today's video we are going to discuss about the genome editing platforms along with some previous year questions you must have heard about some important terms like crispr cas talin and zfn we will be discussing about those platforms in detail along with free notes available on telegram after you watch this video so there is no need to write anything and you can easily download the note free of cost moving ahead let's have a, a quick look onto the history of crispr cas the nobel prize was won in the year 2020 by dr jennifer and dr emmanuel now the thing is before we move ahead in understanding in detail about this crispr cas we should understand what is crispr and what is cas9 crispr stands for the term clustered regularly interspersed short palindromic repeats as you must have heard a basic term in biotechnology or molecular biology the term palindrome which refers to the set of sequences which read same in 5 prime to 3 prime direction on both these strands and you will very shortly understand the example of that as well now coming to the next thing the crispr which is clustered regularly interspersed short palindromic repeats is a kind of repetitive DNA sequence between spacer DNA. So we have something called a spacer DNA which are shown here in different colors. These are your spacers and then we have something called as the CRISPR repeats which can vary in size from 21 minimum to maximum 40 base pairs with exceptions existing everywhere. So the repeating unit here refers to the CRISPR which are shown in pink color. Another important thing that CRISPR sequences are found in bacteria, archaea, and they interestingly resemble viral sequences. The, another important aspect about CRISPR is that they are reported in bacteria and archaea and they are easily transcribed in bacterial cells only upon a kind of viral infection. So whenever a bacteria is attacked or infected by a virus such as bacteriophages, the CRISPR or these CRISPR repeats need to be get transcribed and the RNA which is formed as a result of transcription of these CRISPR which is also called as CRISPR RNA will understand about that that RNA can help the bacterial cells to guide a specific type of endonuclease called as Cas nuclease which is the Cas full form being CRISPR associated nucleases to cleave the viral DNA and stop the viral infection completely. So if you carefully look onto this thing, what we are focusing here is that the CRISPR is a type of repeat found in bacterial genome. And if they are transcribed, usually upon viral infection, that will help the bacterial system to recruit a special type of nuclease and that to an endonuclease, right? That to an important endonuclease, which is known as Cas, the full form of Cas being CRISPR associated nucleases which can cleave the viral DNA and as a result of which there will be no viral infection. So it's a kind of evolutionary machinery, defense machinery in the bacterial system which has been used by the biotechnologists to use this uh, strategy for genome editing in humans. So it was discovered as a defense mechanism in bacteria and archaea bacteria but now it is being used for genome editing 
and solving a lot of therapeutic problems in case of the human system. So let's delve deep into this thing. So I mentioned a term called as palindromic. You will understand that a palindromic sequence is a sequence which, re which reads same on both these strands. So you can see if you look carefully, if I mention this being direction being from 5 prime to the 3 prime system over here and 3 prime to the 5 prime. So interestingly, you can see that the sequence from 5 prime to 3 prime on the upper strand is reading like T, C, C, C like this T, triple C or 4 times C and then G and once again in this strand also it is reading the same from 5 prime to 3 prime. So T, 4 times C and then G and accordingly the rest of the sequence is same. So any sequence which is reading same on both the strand in 5 prime to 3 prime direction is a palindrome and palindrome do have a ability to form an internal stem loop due to internal complementarity as you can easily see over here. I hope that makes sense to everyone right now moving ahead that the CRISPR have the ability to form this thing now let's understand the CRISPR and Cas9 defense mechanism in bacteria in detail so what is the CRISPR and Cas9 defense mechanism now the thing is if a viral system attacks the bacteria that means the virus have their own viral RNA they can also be DNA based viruses that's not a problem but we are referring to the viral material either it's the DNA integrated into bacterial genome then transcribed as an RNA or directly a viral RNA but most of the times it's the DNA based viruses which attack the bacterial system so we refer to the virus and we are referring to the bacteria for example streptococcus bacteria where the discovery took place the streptococcus plus the Cas9 which is a molecular scissor because it's an endonuclease so bacteria have this Cas9 molecular scissor as a mechanism so CRISPR and Cas9 we will understand that there is a part of sequencer which is the, with this repeat this is basically your CRISPR repeat right and this entire system this particular thing this particular cloud like structure is your Cas9 so we have CRISPR and the Cas9 so CRISPR and Cas9 this combination this can actually restrict the viral infection because it can actually prevent the viral uh, machinery from sh shutting down the bacterial system as a result of which there will be no infection but this is just a short story right we need to understand how the crispr cas9 system gives the ability to a bacteria to actually stop the viral infection from happening let's delve deep into this particular system so moving ahead what we have is the CRISPR Cas9 working mechanism in the bacteria. Let's uh, prepare and understand this particular aspect. So, if we look carefully, the first step is obviously a viral infection. So, a virus viral infection happens. So, uh, the viral uh, system can either be an RNA, which can be reverse transcribed and then integrated into bacterial DNA or uh, double stranded DNA genome or it can be a viral DNA which can be directly integrated. So do not be confused and worried about that. Upon viral infection, the viral DNA ultimately aims to get integrated into bacterial genome. So let's say a virus is infecting a bacteria. The next thing is that the viral DNA, right? So you must be wondering, sir, that this viral DNA is single-stranded, how it got converted into double-stranded and got integrated. Do not worry about that. The viral DNA or RNA, so viral DNA, if it is there, it can be converted into double strand and then integrated or viral RNA can be reverse transcribed by reverse transcriptase. So these type of activities are a role of special enzyme present within the virus, which everybody knows about that it is known by the name of reverse transcriptase, right? So we have a system called as reverse transcriptase, which can help either convert the viral RNA into single-stranded DNA and then single-stranded DNA will be converted to double-stranded DNA by the reverse transcriptase activity only, right? So this can be helped. Now, considering that viral DNA is integrated into the bacterial DNA, so you can see that there are several repeats, right? These repeats represented over here, these repeats actually represent your CRISPR, right? So these repeat are representing your CRISPR sequences and the viral DNA gets integrated between two repeats or adjacent to a CRISPR repeat as you can see that the blue segment has been converted into a double stranded structure and got integrated near to a repeated sequence. So the step number one was viral infection, then the virus 
sends its RNA or DNA, which will be ultimately converted into double-stranded DNA by the help of reverse transcriptase, and that material gets integrated adjacent to a repeat, or you can say multiple between CRISPR repeats, right? Now, moving ahead, what is the next strategy? Now, as you know, the virus never utilizes because it never has. So, virus never has its own transcription and translation machinery. It utilizes all the efforts of a host to convert the uh, its own DNA into RNA. So, use, utilizing the RNA polymerases of the bacterial system, the transcription of the entire set of genomic DNA is happening, which is having combination of both viral DNA plus bacterial DNA, which on the left side, which is the blue viral part and it gets transcribed that structure is called as a pre-CR RNA or pre-CRISPR RNA because it is a primary transcript you must be knowing that the first product of transcription is known by the uh, name of a primary transcript and usually usually the primary transcript the primary transcript are often having a particular kind of prefix called as the pre like pre mrna then which will be converted into mrrna so pre crna which will be converted into the crispr rna or crna you will understand and see that thing quickly as of now so the next step we saw that the transcription takes place and a pre crispr rna or pre cr rna is being generated now in the next step which is quite important there comes the role of another important rna called as the tracer RNA right this this tracer RNA along with the incoming entry of Cas9 nuclease and the entry of RNAs 3 into this thing so the important thing is that the Cas9 complexes with the tracer RNA and the CR RNA duplex you must be confused that where is the duplex we cannot see the duplex you will see the duplex very shortly don't worry but the important thing is that the tracer RNAs can recognize the sequence on your pre CR RNA or the uh, the pre CRISPR RNA and recruit certain enzyme called as Cas9 enzyme so this tracer RNA is having kind of complementarity with the parts of pre CR RNA so tracer RNA it is not just one tracer RNA there are thousands of tracer RNA which can identify or they have complementarity with different segments of your pre CR RNA and you will see that what happens in the next step is that the tracer RNA got associated with the different segment including that there was the viral R, uh, viral gene over here and the bacterial genes over here and the tracer RNA is having a complementarity with all of them but the cleaving of Cas9 associated with this thing, this cleaving was done by RNAs3. So RNAs3 is a ribonuclease, right? It can cleave the part of the RNA. So RNAs3 cleaves off the segment. Tracer RNA finds its complementary partner, but it is not alone. It always goes along with the combination of Cas9. So Cas9 plus tracer RNA, this is a duplex being formed. Why it is called as duplex? The CR RNA is called as a duplex. You can easily understand. Now, it is not a pre-CR RNA. Now, the entire structure is being referred to as a CR RNA. So, CR RNA plus tracer RNA plus Cas9. So, what we have over here is a duplex. Why it is a duplex? Because there is a segment coming from the pre-CR RNA. That segment would be called as CR RNA plus there is a tracer RNA. Now, this becomes a duplex of two RNA together. So, there is a CR RNA plus the tracer RNA since two RNA are associated this is called as a duplex right so this duplex is associated with Cas9 and the cleaving is happening with the help of RNAs3 now the next important thing will help you understand that any kind of future infection by the same type of virus will be prevented because of the activity coming in the next slide so you can see easily upon reinfection what is happening now this virus when it infected over here in the picture this was the first infection but what happens if this virus tries to reinfect the same host now when the virus attacks for the second time there is already a combination of CR RNA plus tracer RNA plus Cas9 which is waiting to cleave the the genomic fragment or the double stranded dna of this particular virus so this is basically what we are showing here is a particular viral dna 
I told you that viral DNA can be converted into double stranded form with the, with the help of reverse transcriptase. So as soon as it attacks, this particular combination attacks or gets associated with the with the viral machinery. And you must be wondering, sir, how did it identify that where it should be going on the viral genome? So that identification helps uh, uh, occurs with the help of specific motifs called as the PAM motifs or proto spacer adjacent motifs which are shown in pink over here these pam motifs are here so these pam motifs are present in viral genome and wherever they are present nearby to that this complex of cas9 and crrna machinery gets associated and with the power of cas9 it will perform a double stranded cutting on the viral dna the viral dna would be destroyed and this is called as the genotoxic double stranded breakage because of which there will be no further infection there will be no further infection. So this was a background to what I was describing as being called as the CRISPR-Cas9 defense in the uh, bacterial system. And humans have thought smartly that if we can utilize this power to actually cut desired segments of human genome to perform gene editing, then this, this platform can basically be used for altering a lot of genes suppose there is a disease happening because of a faulty gene you can cut that gene you can replace it with the uh, normal performing gene and therefore the genome editing platform became useful so it was a defense mechanism in bacteria to prevent further infection or reinfection from the same virus but now you will see how we utilize that but before that let's understand that this cutting was done by a particular endonuclease called as the Cas9, right? Or CRISPR associated endonuclease. Let's see how does the Cas9 actually perform the cutting. So the next point that we are coming on to is how does the Cas9 cut the foreign DNA? And this is an important question for the examinations. Now, you remember that there was a combination or a teamwork of CRRNA and tracer RNA which was associated and Cas9 used to uh, interact with that particular combination, right? So the crRNA and the tracer RNA duplex is very important. It will be associated with Cas9. Let's have a look at what are the different uh, domains or regions within the Cas9 nucleus, right? So Cas9 has two regions. One is called as the rec lobe or the recognition lobe and the other one is called as the NUC lobe or nucleus lobe which has the actual cutting power. So rec lobe is called as the recognition lobe and NUC lobe is called as the nucleus lobe, right? So rec lobe is the nucleic acid recognition because what, what do you mean by nucleic acid recognition? So how does Cas9 actually identify or interact with this tracer RNA CRNA complex that is with the help of the recognition lobe or the nucleic acid recognition lobe or and another important thing this will also help the Cas9 to interact with the viral DNA later on where it has to perform the final cleavage right. So viral DNA or RNA how those regions get uh, recognized with the help of the recognition or the nucleic acid recognition lobe called as the rec lobe. The nucleus lobe which is the NUC lobe so it has several uh, 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 domains called as the HNH domain and the RUVC domain and towards the C terminal called as a PAM interacting domain or PI domain. You remember that I told you with how does the Cas9 machinery recognize that where it needs to cut it was a PAM region right. So PAM motifs are identified by the PI domain, the RUVC domain, the RUVC domain and the HNH domain are responsible for performing the actual cutting on the viral DNA. And you have already seen that the Cas9 machinery got associated with the uh, the the tracer RNA and crRNA duplex along with the, the further recognition ability, which happened with the ability of rec lobe, right? So this was how the actual cutting was being done. But the question is, how did the humans learn to utilize this information to? to basically use this knowledge of CRISPR and Cas9 from bacteria to solve our own problems from biotechnological aspect, right? So let's understand how CRISPR or Cas9 is used in genome editing. So the concept is that you know that within the bacterial system, there is a crRNA, there is a tracer RNA, and along with that, there is an associated protein called as the Cas9 protein, right? Which can perform the cleavage of the 
viral target viral dna so humans are very smart they can you understand and utilize something to their own advantage so what we did is that we thought if we somehow can generate something which is just like this tracer rna right tracer rna and cr rna so if we create something which is a combination of this tracer plus cr rna which humans for their own understanding called as sg rna called as single guide rna this particular single guide rna can help you to target the cas9 to wherever you want within the genome and it can actually go and perform a cutting which can be repaired by the internal dna repair system also so the single guide rna is always synthesized in vitro for that you need to understand where it should be complementary showing complement complementarity to so if you know the sequence of a part which you want to edit within the genome you should be knowing its sequence then you can synthesize the guide rna then the guide rna can help you to direct the cas9 to that part of the genome where the actual cutting can be done so within the human system we use this platform for genome editing to our own advantage right please try to understand that when genome editing is happening in human system uh, this this is the single guide rna and uh, the minimum uh, uh, the uh, the complementarity region shown in red uh, is uh, is around 20 nucleotide please remember just like the virus system was having a pam similarly a region should be there to which cas9 can go and identify that region identifying region has a specific sequence called as ngg where n uh, is indicating any of the four nucleotides so any of the four nucleotide right it can be anything n for anything right over here and it can uh, ngg now the important thing is how does it identify so uh, let's say if this is a if this protein was a wild type protein it's having ncg sequence you can mutate that to become the ngg then the cas9 will be directed to that particular region to perform genome editing so you can control if if you know where to make a chain and you find that ncg sequence or similar to that you can actually mutate that to ngg then cas9 can come to that region and ultimately you can perform genome editing but it is not that easy it there can be problem with you uh, the sequences there can be improper identification cas9 can land to incorrect location also so it is all in early phases but crispr cas9 genome editing has been successful in lot of systems but there can be chances of error also right so coming to the next thing that how crispr cas9 gene editing uh, repairs uh, uh, that particular break which is being created by the cas9 endonuclease so we have the sg rna along with the with the cas9 which you know and it uh, uh, it uh, identifies near the pam sequence right or proto uh, pr uh, pr 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 this uh, proto uh, proto spacer adjacent motifs and then the cutting happens right once the break is being created that break can be repaired with the help of non homologous end joining or homology directed repair right so this is in short called as nhej this one is called as the homology directed repair, uh, repair so no non homologous end joining is like it can either be nucleotide deletion or nucleotide addition and you have the disrupted thing so if you want to actually repress a particular gene of interest if you are interested that i want to shut down a particular gene then crispr cas can do that for you as well or if you want to activate a particular gene and repair it then it can also activate a particular gene or gene of interest right so activate a particular gene so gene editing can help you in both direction to either shut down a faulty gene or to either activate a particular gene or uh, post post repairing and it can help you in both directions that's why it's called as the gene, genome editing platform so coming on to the next thing that we have is the application of crispr cas for genome editing in medicine to treat genetic diseases in drug development in generating engineered uh, animals biofuel production plant biotechnology lot of things right another important aspect which you should be understanding is that how crispr cas can help you to treat diseases like cancer so there can be uh, in vivo approach also there can be ex vivo approach also in vivo you have injection of a viral or non viral vectors containing therapeutic element and they pr uh, perform the changes within the uh, 
uh, within the patient's body or you can remove the cells from the patient body correct the genetic material of the cell you can transplant those corrected cells back to the patient which is called as the ex vivo strategy right coming on to how it can help in treating cancer uh, recently lot of things have gained in a uh, lot of people have gained interest into this kind of uh, strategy so please try to understand that uh, crispr can be used in immunotherapy as well for example you can collect a white uh, a white blood cells or the wbcs of the patient from from that you, the even the t cells are isolated t cells can be engineer to express a specific type of receptor called as chimeric antigen receptor or car please remember if a particular t cell is having a car receptor then it can target a tumor cell and it can destroy that tumor cell easily right so you can make uh, easily make them to express the car or uh, chimeric antigenic receptors then once their t cells are modified they can be grown in culture they can be infused back into the patient and car t cells can eventually enter into different tumors and destroy them as indicated over here right so this is how the power of crispr cas can also be used in immunotherapy or treating particular disorders right apart from crispr cas there are several other genome editing platforms and uh, those editing platforms uh, uh, are dependent on certain proteins uh, like uh, certain nucleases identify zinc finger proteins then those nucleases are are basically the zinc finger nucle nucleases some nucleases uh, identify specific protein or bind uh, uh, with specific protein called as the tail protein so then it is called as the tail nucleases then crispr cas9 you already know i told you that the repair once the dna broken at a double uh, double stranded site the repair can happen either via the nhe approach or the homology dependent repair so either it can be to repress a particular target gene or activate a particular target gene right this is a comparison table you can uh, easily go through this thing and uh, they, there can be questions regarding this thing but the important thing is that recognition site in for the zfn based platform it's the zinc finger protein where the nucleus bind for uh, for the talon approach it's the tail protein which is being recognized and for cas9 crispr cas9 you know that it's a single guide rna with respect to humans right the nucleus is involved are poc1 nucleus poc1 nucleus and here it is the cas9 nucleus the target sequence size is also important to so have a look at that thing if it is a single zfn monomer then 9 to 18 base pair for the entire pair right on the up, upper strand and the lower strand then it is the 18 to 36 base pair right then you can try to uh, understand this thing but these three things form an important parameter to understand and can be an important question in the examination coming on to some uh, uh, some uh, mcqs so this is clear who are the scientists who won the 2020 nobel prize in chemistry for their work on crispr cas9 and you are knowing that it was dr jennifer and dr emmanuel so emmanuel and jennifer is the correct answer next question what does crispr cas9 stand for you actually know that crispr stand for clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats so it's clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats and cas9 obviously right and cas9 is crispr associated uh, uh, nucleus not caspase not cleave sequence so you know the option d is the correct answer what are the two main component of crispr and cas9 you know that it's the uh, it's the cr rna if you know that which is the crispr rna plus a cas9 molecular caesar so the correct answer is crispr rna and cas9 nucleus or the molecular caesar right moving ahead how does crispr cas9 work so the crispr cas9 work you know that the guide rna bind to specific dna sequence and then the cas9 protein cuts the dna at a target location so it's the Uh, it's the strategy which you already know that i told you how tracer and crrna that was the original uh, bacterial defense system how it can be joined by a linker to form a single guide rna in vitro and that is being used by the humans to to actually guide the gene therapy or uh, 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 solving a specific uh, genome editing problem what are some potential application of crispr 9 it can be gene therapy crop improvement disease treatment so all of the above what are some ethical concerns associated with crispr cas9 yes there can be lot of problem accidental gene editing ecological imbalance will happen if some new faulty species are created with respect to plant or even animals so all of the above what are some limitation of crispr cas9 it is not always possible to target the desired dna sequences yes that's correct it can be difficult to control the extent of gene editing which is also correct it can cause non targeted mutation correct so all of the above would be the correct answer 
Cas9, I told you it's an endonucleus, so it's an endonucleus which can make double stranded breaks in the DNA. CRISPR Cas9 originally discovered as part of defense mechanism against viruses in, so it was discovered in bacteria. Single uh, stranded RNA that is complementary to target DNA sequence uh, used in CRISPR Cas9 is called as, so all of you know that single stranded RNA is called as the guide RNA uh, that we are using currently in the CRISPR Cas strategy, right? So this is the single stranded RNA that is complementary to the target DNA sequence, right? I hope that makes sense to everyone. Which of the following statement is true regarding DNA repair in CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing? So it can, uh, the repair can ha happen by this NHEJ, it can happen by SDR, it can also uh, happen by the endogenous DNA repair. So endogenous DNA repair is like a cell's inherent ability to repair uh, the damages. Uh, so I think the uh, correct answer would be all of the above in that category. Which of the following is not a genome editing technology? So we have ZFN, T Talon, CRISPR-Cas. So the only thing is DNA footprinting. Uh, I must tell you what is DNA footprinting. DNA footprinting is a strategy which is uh, used to understand DNA protein interaction. So to understand the protein binding site on a DNA, right? Where a particular protein. So there are several protein which can interact with the DNA. To understand the protein binding site on the DNA, you, you utilize this uh, DNA footprinting assay. In fact, there is a specific enzyme used in this thing called as DNAs1. So wherever a protein binds on a DNA, this DNAs1, which is a nucleus, it can perform cutting, but it cannot cut the region where uh, the protein has successfully bound. So when the sequencing happens, the region where the protein was bound, there would be no sequencing information available for that. So that means you can easily identify the region where a protein actually bound to that particular DNA. So that will be all for today. Thank you for your patience. I will be uploading more content shortly.